Hey, if Lindenapolis Center, do you have any right test here. operation in the restricted area 2508? Area 31, Roger. The traffic is quite luminous and is exhibiting some non ballistic motion, over. Roger, Area 31. Continue to send at your discretion, over. Okay, Center. The traffic is approaching head on, ultra right, and really moving. They're right by us right now. There are a thousand UFO sightings reported around the world every month. 90% of these sightings can be explained, but 10% cannot. Officially and unofficially, the U.S. military has been investigating UFOs since 1947. Their top secret goal is to find out what's behind these unexplained sightings. The Pentagon classifies them as unusual airborne anomalies, but a better term is X-Files. Join us now as Mac Wanwan and Commander Cobra explore these unsolved cases, UFO incidents that baffle even the U.S. military. This is Mac Maloney's Military X-Files. And now, here's Mac Maloney. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Mac Maloney's Military X-Files show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. This is Mac Maloney. What a special show we have here tonight. Our World War II trivia show, our third or fourth one. Can't remember which, but let me introduce the members of the extended posse, girls. Get ready, get your mister, get your fan, get your uh, big box of Kleenex, the big box of wipes, and squeegee in some lube because he's here for the first time in two weeks, the very famous Juan Juan. Yeah, i got to have that lube. Hello, Mac. Glad to be here as always. I live for this, and it's going to be an exciting show tonight. It's going to be really fantastic. You have the Rolling Stones blanket uh, uh- in your background, stones blanket. It's the, been uh, laundered. Unwa- unwashed blanket. It's washed and not washed. It's unwashed. Unbelievable. Okay. No cocoa tonight. Speak about the unwashed. No cocoa tonight. He's out on a secret mission saving the world. No switchy tonight. He's moving his headquarters. Uh, no club tonight. He's down the casino, as it turns out. But who's with us is uh, our favorite good witch. They're in Sideways, New York. Raven is with us. Raven, how are you? Hi, my friends. I'm doing good. Thanks hmm. for having me. Well, it's always a pleasure. Now, uh, week two of the new hairdo, right? The new hairdo. And I'm also drinking expired beer that my dad gave me. I just want to point that out. <laughs> Not surprised that he gave me. it to you, but yeah, expired beer, like expired date-wise? Yeah. Yeah, that's my favorite brand. Well, he must expired have got beer. Ex- expired beer. Yeah, it's real. He, good. he must have got it it's cheaply. Expired by like a year, yeah. but I mean, I don't want it to go to waste, wow. so I'm just gonna drink it. <laughs> wow, wow, man, oh man, only Larry, only him. Anyway, well, thanks yeah. for joining yeah. us tonight. We appreciate it, and um, we're all gonna get that here, do I think? I think that you're first out of the trend. Okay. I think you guys should. I think you'd all look wonderful with it. Really? We can all match. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Well, club have to send his system back to get died. No, listen, he's not here hey, to defend. Listen, Willie, he's not here to defend himself. It's a hair. Send that to it's me a hair system. That. Okay, that voice you hear is a uh, southern correspondent out there, down there below the Mason Dixon line. Jocko Johnson, Jojo, you all right? Yeah, peachy keen. Yeah, is that a New York Rangers hat on your head? If it is, take it off. It's a NYPD hat. Oh, okay. All Come right. on, Mac, you knew that. No, wait a minute. New York Rangers. In your eyes, Jack. Th- that voice that you just heard is uh, Jim Franklin, a very famous liberty agent. Jim, how are you doing? It's a Rangers hat. Howdy. Howdy. That, that, There's a Rangers Get hat. that ring. Get that thing off. <laughs> Bunch of pussies. Killing everybody. You're just jealous. Jim Franklin, how are you doing? You're down there. You're not. You're, you're just as bad. You're down in somewhere. Not quite as, as far as south as JoJo, but um, we're here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Okay. Enjoying life. Okay. And, uh, nice. You've been very busy. Mm. How, far, how far are you away from, you got to have some stadium down there. There's so much sports, so much college, everything that went on down there. Where, what's the closest sporting arena to you? Well, Duke, Duke is in Durham, and uh, uh, UN, University of North Carolina is in Chapel Hill, mm-hmm. and um, – NC State is somewhere around here. So I'd go nuts down <laughs> there. there's Wake Forest. I mean, there's a yeah. bunch of colleges around Yeah, here. yeah. That's the whole thing. That's the center of the universe for college basketball anyway. So yeah. a, a Jim is with us. Okay, so now we're going to uh, – let's go to Phil Orbain, a good friend down there in uh, Manchester, Mass, where the rich people live. Phil, how you doing, Phil? 
Well, I'm not quite in Manchester. I'm in Magnolia. Magnolia is oh, that's even more. That that's name. even more expensive than it's Manchester. So Come on, wow. Okay. Magnolia sounds like the southern part of Massachusetts. Well, listen. Yes, it does. It's the southern I, part I get, of Gloucester, actually. Yes. So I'm going right. towards Cape Ann. Yeah. And every time I see the exit sign off 128, I go, uh -huh, Magnolia. Hey, by yeah. the way, I have a trivia question. <laughs> okay. Not that I'm going to give you the answer to. There is one great historical um, event that took place in Magnolia, Massachusetts, okay. which nowadays is part of Gloucester, Massachusetts. And the event is, this is where the draft for the League of Nations was composed by Woodrow Wilson oh, really? and his top assistant, Edward House. And Magnolia? Wow. Really? Yeah. Who would have thought? What, they got no. lost? They must have got lost. In a, Not in a, me. Some Magnolia of all places. There's a whole story about how he was, Wilson was on an estate uh, at Oceanside, protected by the U.S. Navy. Wow. In the event the Germans uh, should uh, send some submarines his way. And it was within two miles of where I'm sitting right now. Hmm. Uh, joining us from Holmes Rod Troops is our good friend. I'm going to just call him General Tom. Let's give him a round of applause while we're saluting General Tom. So for Thanks, once, Mac. great to be with you. For once and only, just tell us your full name, and then you won't have to say it for the rest of the night. Tom Landemeyer, Landemeyer. With Homes for our Troops. Yeah, Homes for our Troops. Now, Homes for our Troops, you hear us talking about them all the time. Mm -hmm. They're a great organization that takes your donations and builds houses for people who have been wounded in post-9-11 action, let's say, Afghan war, Iraqi war. They build these houses for them. They may be missing limbs or whatever, and just they just make them easier for them to get around in. Easier steps, lower counter space, that kind of stuff. And then when they're done, they give them the keys. They tear up the mortgage. It's their place. And 85% of the people who uh, happen to uh, come upon this program go on to lead just you know, normal lives, better lives. You know, and, and this thing that has happened to them while fighting for us you know, isn't such as an impediment as it is maybe if they don't have this help. That's just a, a, our nation just isn't up to that standard yet. But homes for our troops. Home Star Troops, just Google them. You'll see what we're talking about. Tom, thanks for joining us tonight on World War II Trivia. Thank you. You bet. Thanks for having me. We Can't all wait to play. I feel, Very worthy cause. I feel that thanks, I yeah. should be on my best behavior because the general is here. At one point, now you um, you ran South Korea, right? Is that what your bio said? You actually no. ran the country? <laughs> no. Ran no. South Korea. I huh? was, <laughs> my boss did. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Um, yes. Yeah. No. Okay. I was in charge of the army installations uh, on the Korean Peninsula. Mm -hmm. So not the forces that are inside them, but the installations themselves and making sure they were uh, oh. properly prepared to support our forces and all the families and everything that were over there. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. How long did you do that for? I did that for two years. Mm -hmm. What did you think of the food over there? Did you ever get into the Korean food? Yeah. Loved it. That's been one of the great things about traveling all over the world is yes. – Get to try all the different kinds of food, mm -hmm. and uh, okay. start, start moving again. up uh, in the ranks, and you end up representing, you know, your country at different events, yep. and you're always expected to partake, and it's it's always always a good thing. Always a good all, thing. Always fun. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I've heard some people like eat some weird stuff. Cleaning. Yeah. No. No. Just give me a hamburger, and okay. So listen. <laughs> So tonight what we're going to do, German. we're going to play World War II trivia, okay? And what we're playing for is at the end of the show, people have written in their names to us. We're going to pick from the magic fishbowl Raven is for the uh, people who are going to win tonight. And our contestants, though, are playing for them. So let me just introduce the contestants again. Phil O'Bain, Phil, also General Tom, Jocko, X, and Jim Frankel. Okay, five contestants. We're going to go 20 questions. Whoever has the most, if you get if you get the question right, you get a point. Whoever has the most points at the end of the night is the first place winner, okay? Phil, now you're the, uh, you know how to do these things. How's that sound to you? Sounds good. Okay, one week. All right. Now, so here we go. Question number one. And I'm looking at my... My uh, yeah, my new cell phone. Man, I hate this thing. I hate it. <laughs> okay, here we go. World War II trivia questions. Our first question, okay? 
These days, a B-52 bomber can carry 70,000 pounds of bombs. A B-2 stealth bomber can carry about 60,000 pounds of bombs. How many pounds of bombs could a World War II B-17 carry? So write down your answer. When time is up, we'll call on you to give us your answer. This is the maximum payload, not the uh, typical payload. Right, yes, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, while they're writing down their answers. I think we have some music. Jack and I will sing. Okay, here you go. Ready? Oh, God. I hope not. The Jeopardy music. Right, Raven? Who was saying, we're waiting for the timer. <laughs> okay, is everyone ready? Is everyone stopped writing? And once again, Mac, this is the maximum payload of a B-17. Right. This is the, uh, I think you would call it the maximum typical payload because they are always on long-range flights. Yep. Okay. Are we ready, gang? Jocko. I got it. Jocko's writing, yes, the, I'm ready. writing the book. Okay. I was writing the question. Why don't we go right to uh, X? X, how many pounds <laughs> of bombs did the B-17 carry? Why does that not surprise me? I, I know it wasn't a lot. Go ahead. I, I, I would assume it's less than 10,000. I'd say three tons, 6,000 pounds. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Uh, no, Jocko. Everybody's changing their answer. No, no, no. <laughs> It's the way it works. <laughs> Jocko. I'm going to say 2,000. Okay, 2,000 pounds. General. 10,000. Okay, Jim. 7,000. Okay, Phil. Well, I think on a typical mission over Germany, it would carry 4,000, but I think the maximum payload was 6,000. Okay. All right, the answer is... 4,500 pounds or just two and a half tons. They didn't really carry a lot of bombs for all the action, for all the things that they did. Like there were British bombers that were carrying like 10,000 pounds a night and stuff like yeah. that. But for all the work, for all the sacrifices they did, just to drop, I mean, it sounds crazy, just to drop that small amount of bombs was kind of odd. Okay. So, all right. Uh, number one. So let's see. Who got that right? Can anyone raise this? Uh, so I think, uh, Phil, you were the closest one. I got two. No, no. Two of us were at 6,000. Okay. okay. I, said, I, I think said. JoJo was the closest. JoJo and, and Phil get a and point. Some pl and some players said 3,000. So if the difference is 1,500. Right. Then there's three of us who were 1,500 pounds off. Okay. So do we have the score there, Raven? So are we doing... Within a range, yes. then yes, so it would be yes. Jim, Phil, and JoJo each get a point. Three people got points. Yep, for that. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. I was seven thousand. Right, didn't there we go. didn't okay. say four thousand. Forty five hundred. Here we go. Question two on D Day: seventy three thousand Americans, sixty one thousand British, and twenty one thousand Canadian troops stormed the beaches of Normandy. How many German defenders were waiting for them? Oh, good question. Ooh. What, were the, what were those numbers again? There were 73,000 um, 73, Americans, 61,000 British, and 21,000 Canadians. And this is the just, just defending the five beaches at Normandy. Right, yep. Yeah, we should do a song. We should have music in here. We should have, you know, we should have rehearsed a dance, a song and a dance that Juan Juan Raven and I could do. We can, we can fix it in post. We'll go in the studio. And <laughs> really? Yeah, and there's that. something with green screening? Okay. Yeah, some beds. We'll, we'll record <laughs> some beds. We'll wear the Raven wigs. Now the whole, the whole wig we'll discussion is uh, full circle. Okay. I whip my hair back and forth. I whip my hair back and forth. Yes. Let's have an hour of that. Okay. Does everyone have an answer? Yes. Here we go. Okay. I'm going to go to Phil first. Uh, the question was, on D-Day, 73,000 Americans, 61,000 British, 21,000 Canadian troops stormed the beaches of Normandy. How many German defenders were waiting for them? Well, that's that's really an excellent question, Mac. Um I'm going to say 32,000. Okay. Let's go to the general. General, what do you say? 72,000. Okay. X, what do you say? 23,000. 
Okay, Jocko, what do you say? 95,000. Wow, Jim, what do you say? I'm probably way off, but I'm saying 20,000. Okay, the answer is, and this is going to be interesting, the answer is 50,000. 50,000. They were basically oh, yeah. one to three, one to three. You know, they always say it takes three guys, you know, to one to yeah. take you over a defensive them. position. All right, so, you know, you know, I'm, I'm thinking Fortress Europa, but we were talking yeah. about just the beach. So, right? who, uh, yeah. so who, who came the closest on that? I don't know. Who came the closest? Who were the answers? Uh, the, uh, the, Looks like Phil did. Yeah, 50,000. 50,000 was the answer. Okay. 95. 95. General, you said 70. I think it is. I, I think it's Phil. It's yeah, Phil. It's Phil. Okay. Yeah, it is Phil. Okay, I'm, I'm off by 18. Okay, Phil, you yeah, get a point. And, and this was divisions, German divisions. Number of people, right. Yeah, 50,000 people. German Combat division. Yes. Right? Yep. Right or more in Germany. Three to one. Three to one. All right, defending, here we go. Defending the beaches. Defending yeah, the beaches, yeah. 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 All right, here we go. Okay. Uh, the Atlantic Wall was the name given to Nazi defenses along the coast of Europe to guard against an Allied invasion. It took more than two years to build, stretched 80 miles along the French coast, had a total of 12,000 gun emplacements, and was built by 1.4 million forced laborers. Once called the greatest feat of military engineering history, how long did it take for the Atlantic Wall to fall? What's your answer, Jocko? Two days. Go ahead, Phil. What's your answer? Fifteen days. General, what's your answer? I didn't have one. Okay, X. What's your answer? X. What's your answer? I said it three days. Hey, Jim, what's your answer? Seven hours. <laughs> it's it, Jim wins one day. Wow! Well, for all that, Ooh. it was gone in one day. Yes. Ooh. I, I okay. had two because I think they had to get behind uh, the wall. Jim, Jim, and Jocko get points. Get to the hedgerows, at least. Okay, here we go. Yeah, but just to get through the Atlantic Wall, which, as right, Phil right. was saying, they breached it like on the afternoon. Well, a lot of yeah, places they just walked that's over that's it, as it turns out. saying. They blew one wall right up and passed Some of the stuff, I'm telling you, some of the stuff you learn about D Day just researching this, unbelievable. Some of the stuff <laughs> that. <laughs> which which beach was that? Was it. Um, I think it was probably Omaha America. Beach. Yeah, it had it well. But other places, the Canadians, they took, the Canadians took the most land, the British took the most Juno. prisoners. It's crazy. All right, here we go. Name at least six okay. of the eight main Axis powers. Name at least six of the eight main Axis powers. Okay. The Axis powers was the alliance that we fought against, we being the allies fought against during World War II. All right, are we ready? Gonna start with X just to piss them off. X. Yeah, I, I I think it's the six Axis powers at the beginning were German, Germany, Austria. If you consider go ahead, Austria, go ahead. Plus, Romania, Hungary, Italy, and Japan. Wow. Yeah, he got it. Okay. And now, and now everybody's gonna write. No, no, that's all right. I, got, I got that too, but I got an extra one. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, Jocko. What are your What are your answers? Just tell I us. I got Russia. <laughs> The Axis the USSR. Oh, we got to throw Germany, them out that. Japan, <laughs> okay. Italy, yes. Romania, Austria, and I was going to say Vichy France, but that's an extra. Russia was not involved, but we're going to have to give them points for something. Phil, please. That's right, because they were. Yeah, well, I considered Austria to have already been absorbed by Germany. Right, so yes, I correct. I name them separately. I had Germany, Italy, Japan, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria. Okay. Yep. Bulgaria. Okay. Good. Yep. Good job. General, you want to give it a shot, General? I had uh, Germany, Italy, Japan, Hungary, Slovakia, and Romania. Yeah, right. Exactly. Okay. There's we like got everyone. Ten, Jim, your turn, Jim. All up. There's, there's like 10 countries. Everyone's getting a point. Yeah. Jim, go oh, ahead. Okay. You just wanted six out of the whole bunch. Six I out of, right. Yep. It changed over the over the course of the war. Right. Jimbo, right. what do you got there? Hello. Talking to me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I had Russia in there, so I, I'm I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe everyone won't get a point. But yes, what what uh, the answers are: Germany, 
And Germany and Austria at that time were one country. Germany, Italy, Bulgaria, Hungary, Slovakia, Romania, Japan, and Finland. Finland. Okay. Finland. I thought they were ramped up. All right, which leads us to our next question. Uh, during the nearly six years of worldwide <laughs> conflict, which Axis power did not declare war on the United States? Oh. Hmm. <laughs> so, did I make the questions too hard? Are they too hard, Raven? What do you think, Raven? <laughs> They're too, uh, they're too <laughs> ambiguous. They're, they're too ambiguous. esoteric. I mean, well, it's too hard for me, that's for sure. One. But I graduated from Johnson City, so that doesn't say a lot. Shut off your microphone. Johnson City. One. Where, the, where they make the beer? All right, here we go. I got to tell you, Mac, I think whether they're hot or not, they're good questions. Okay, that's they're all we need. They're, they're, they're very good. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, here we go. You go first, then X. You go first, X. During the nearly six years <laughs> of worldwide conflict, which Axis power did not declare war on the United States? I'm going to say Finland. Okay. Jimbo, what do you say? Jim. I, I was going to say Finland also. Jojo, what do you say? I'll agree with Finland. Okay. General <laughs> General is nodding. General, what do you say? Well, I'm sorry if it's Finland. right, and I yes. think it. I got to tell you. And that. Phil, <laughs> Phil, what do you say? I, I say Finland. Yeah, I gave it away. I mean, you know, Finland was in a very strange position in World War II because the Russians were their enemy. The Russians invaded them and they, and they, you know, fought them back for a long time. And they had to be Germany's ally just by happenstance. You know, my enemy's enemy is my friend. Very interesting story what they did in Finland during World War II. Anyway, all right, here we go. Now, this one, I know about this one, man. This is a super question. The Allied nations, or simply the Allies, were comprised of nearly two dozen countries, but the principal players were known as the Big Four. Name the Big Four countries. I feel like I'm having a nightmare and I'm back in school and I'm the school teacher. This is awful. Yeah. Want, me to go, want me to go first so X gets a break? Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Well, well we, got, we got 45 seconds. We got 45 Calm seconds, down. said Jojo. Calm what do you, you got? Somewhere to go? <laughs> no, I'm just guessing. Ba 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 boom. Okay. All right, here we go. All right. Raven's cat is wagging its tail, which means we're getting down to the end of the... <clears throat> oh, not is... yet, yeah. It'd be funny if the real cat was doing it, yeah. Okay, he's not wagging his tail, is he? The wild cat? No. No. I was like, what? It is? Okay, all right. <laughs> just trying to, he's DOA. He's DOA. Just trying to paint the picture. Okay, here we go. Phil, why don't you go for us, Phil? Um, the United States, the UK, or perhaps more generally the British Empire, mm-hmm. France and China. Wow, yes, that's it, General. General, go ahead. I'm going to say uh, U.S., U.K., U.S.S.R. and China. Yep, yep. Well, go ahead, JoJo. I thought everyone would. I'm agreeing with you. Agree okay, with Jim. Yeah, yeah, that's. Yeah, I know, that's yeah, an I, easy I one. Okay. That one. I, I had it, U.S., England, China, and Russia. Okay. Hey, Raven, everyone but Phil got a point on that one, okay? Yep. What, what, did we not get X's? Answer? Yeah, well, he got it. He got it. Sure. Okay. Everyone, okay. All right, <laughs> I love you, X. All right, here we go. All right, Liberty Ships was the name given to a fleet of 2,700 cargo ships the U.S. built during the war to move men and supplies to the battlefronts. These ships were designed to be built quickly. What is the quickest time one was built? Hint, it's under 100 days. Wow. Okay, I read wow. it Liberty Ships was the name given to a fleet of 2,700 cargo ships the U.S. built during the war to move men and supplies to the battlefronts. These ships were designed to be built quickly. What is the quickest time one was built? Hint, it's under 100 days. All right. X, you ready? We're going to you. Uh, I'm going to – this is a, a – it's called a WAG. Go it's ahead. a wild-ass guess. Yep. I'm going to say it's uh, 63 days. Oh, wow. No, not even close. Go ahead, Jim. 
was in 98 days. Go ahead, jo- JoJo. One day. Phil. <laughs> well, I, I used to know the answer to this, and I don't, I'm go not ahead. sure if I got it right, but I put down three days. Okay. <laughs> General, go there ahead. Was a, there was a contest. That's what it was. Right. That's what it was. There a race. Was a See how fast they could do it. General. Yeah, yeah but I, I thought I remember reading somebody. I thought it was like, Five days. Or oh somewhere. yes. Okay. All right. Well, as it turns out, it was four days. Wow. Four days they built this wow. ship in. Yeah. Four, three, one. We had it all yeah. over. Yeah. Yeah. It was quick because they had a he, right. They had a contest. And is that what it was? Yeah. How fast they could build them. They didn't do it all the time, but <laughs> right. But I wanted you to can know. imagine how many volunteers wanted to go on. Well, work quickly. Yeah. It was a winning yeah. shipyard. Uh, it was um, it was uh, the name of the ship was the USS Robert E Perry. It was launched in uh, November 1942, and workers have built it in four days, 15 hours, and 29 minutes. The f- fastest yes. ship record uh, ever on record as being built. Wow! What shipyard, Mac. Louisiana? Uh, no, it was out in Seattle. Seattle. Oh, Seattle. Okay, here we go. Wow, we uh, Raven. We we got the score right. We the, the three people got the got that right. Phil got it. The general got it, and I think Jocko got it. I said a day. I don't know if okay. that counts, but I'll take it. I don't know whether I want to sail on that ship or not, but yeah, okay. But a point, I take a trip. But, okay, Raven, we okay. we good there, Raven. I'm gonna give him a point. Okay, here we go. Here we go. In 1944, a Japanese operation known as Fugo was responsible for launching nearly 10,000 bomb-carrying balloons towards the west coast of North America. While only 1,000 or so actually made it over land, the U.S. government imposed strict censorship on the incident so as not to panic the civilian population. This Japanese bombing of the continental United States is considered the second best-kept secret of World War II. What was the first? Yeah. I'll take a shot. All right, write it down like everyone else. Okay. I'll try to save X from going first. <laughs> that ship lit, sailed a long time ago, John Cone. Don't worry. Sorry, man. They won't blame you. Bow, 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 dee, boom. So how's the dog, Raven? Raven, how's uh, Jack and Coke? What's his name? <laughs> he was actually just sitting next to me and he, Scotch he just, and uh, apparently doesn't care for my company anymore and he left the room. <laughs> Scotch and water. Okay, Go maybe, figure. Yeah. <laughs> he knew we were going to be talking about him. You never know. Yeah. He's good. He's a, you know, he's a dork. He's a dork. Yeah. He's a good dog, though. Are we ready? We're ready. All right. Here we go. X, sorry. Go. Alter the U.S. cipher codes. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hang on a second. What? What? Okay, go ahead. Yep. That, that, so you're saying the U.S. cipher codes were the number one secret kept during World War II? Yes. By the U.S.? Or Japan? Yeah, by the U.S. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, Jim, okay. go ahead, Jim. I was going to say the Manhattan Project. Okay, JoJo. I was going to say the code they broke at Midway. I don't think it was Ultra. I thought that was the British. Okay. One, General, Tom. Was General Tom. General Tom. Manhattan. Phil. Manhattan. Project. Yeah, the Manhattan Project, dude. Dude, so, you know, the, the biggest secret ever kept ever. 55,000 people worked on that, and not one of them spoke. So we get Jim, the general, and Phil get points. X, I would have figured, you know, the water yeah, plant. X, yeah, out. come on. Both of you guys should be embarrassed. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Uh, the term GI was used throughout the war for nearly everything related to the U.S. Army, but where did GI come from? Did it come from the yeah. term government issue or from supply clerks who began listing garbage cans as GI because they were made out of galvanized iron? Hmm. I didn't learn this on Mrs. Maisel, so I don't know. <laughs> no, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking it was a medical procedure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It is now. With the, you know. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yes. That's the first thing I thought of. <laughs> Not back then. Okay. All right. X looks ready. He's drinking his cocoa. So, you ready there? I, I don't know. I've, 
I've always thought it was government issue, but now you're thinking me making me think it's a trick question. Right. Okay, go ahead. Galvanized right. industrial or whatever the hell you're talking about. <laughs> Suppose it isn't. Go ahead. I'm go- I'm going to go with the story I've heard since I was six years old. Okay. Government issue. Okay, Jim, what do you say, Jim? I, I think it's government issue. Okay, but- Jocko, what do you say, Jojo? I agree. It's probably a trick question. Okay. But I want to go with that, General. Yeah, what do you say? Government issue. Government issue. General. Uh, originally, I'm gonna say galvanized iron. Okay, Phil. <laughs> well, <laughs> like knows. everybody else, up until recently, I always thought it was government <laughs> issue, but I seem to remember running across it as originating as galvanized iron. All right. Yes. Okay. The general and Damn. Phil get points. Yeah. <laughs> Galvanized that's iron. So that's how it started. Crazy. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It's like uh, it's almost so like the, saying all our troops are garbage cans. No, it's, nice. it, it's almost like <laughs> saying that um, you know the reason that it tanks crazy. are called tanks. The reason tanks are called tanks is when they were moving them through England in the first first world world war, and they wanted them to be secret. They just rode on the sides of the railroad cars, tanks. You know, as if they were water tanks or something, and the name yeah. stuck. Anyway, wow, fun fact. All right, here we go. Yeah, they put them on a crate. Yeah, that is a like they're, they're, they're like solid, you know, like iron. Yes. Right? That's a solid thing. Okay, so. here we go. So um, we're going to have uh, this question, then we'll take a little bit of a break. Okay, so within five pounds, how many pounds of gear did the average American infantryman carry during World War II? Okay, within five pounds. You mean on the march? With, within five pounds, how many pounds of gear did an average Infantry, American infantrymen carry during World, World War II, let's say, into battle. Did you say gear or beer? Gear and beer. <laughs> Don't include okay, the beer. Sir, can I ask a question? Go ahead. Raise your hand. Yes. Mr. Johnson, go ahead. Uh, professor, was it uh, as opposed to now and then? Is it more or It's less? World War II. It's a World War trivia contest. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. You ready? <laughs> He's trying to get the answer out of you. Get that, See, that's an interrogation. Get that Ragin's hat off your head. You won't be, you know, questioning things as much. You have been, uh, questioned. Yep. You have been questioned by the police. He said past contact. Yeah. Well, he that's just, he that's a rumor. Ten I'll, I'll, seconds. I'll, I'll, I'll follow up on... Uh, on Go ahead, on yes. Go ahead, Raven. What do you say, Raven? Yeah. Time up, Raven? Uh, yep. <laughs> wow, what are you drinking? What are you drinking there? Look at the size of that mug she's got there. Okay. Less, hey, X, less cruise. Is that, glass, the, right? is that the, uh, over? That, the, that's that's been one. refilled. That's been refilled with the, ex, uh, with the, with the <laughs> expired one, beer. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. We, oof, uh, okay. <clears throat> All right, we're ready, I guess. Good, Phil, we'll start with you, Phil. 60 pounds. 60 pounds. How many uh, pounds of gear did an American infantryman carry during World War II? General, please. 75 pounds. 75. Jocko, what do you say? I want to say 50. 50. Okay, Jim, what do you say? 42. Okay. X, what do you say? I'm going to agree with Phil and say 60, but this is on the march. Not into battle. Well, we but said into battle. Then. What do you? What we said into battle. Is it going to change your uh, answer? Power, tr- power troop is carried over hundred. Okay, pounds. here we go. That's ready? Point. Yeah. Are we ready? The answer is eighty-five pounds, the heaviest of any Whoa. foot soldier in the history of warfare. Eighty-five wow. pounds. So who came close? General Tom would have been the closest. Okay. All right. He gets a point. Wow. He gets a point. Okay. All right. Listen. They're while well we, over that now. Yeah. Yeah. See, I always used to think, too, and this is probably a discussion from the show, but when they were, you know, landing on Normandy, why didn't they just give the first wave gun and ammunition? What are they What are they carrying their tent for when? They weren't. They were carrying other weapons, dynamite. Seat yeah, but war. they were carrying their own Angular personal stuff, too. Ammunition, I know. grenades. But you could have waited. You yeah, could, I mean, you would hope. I mean, you could reduce it. They had to have re- known they weren't going to make it far. Mm, some of them were. Videos, medical equipment. The other guys brought the other stuff up. Okay. Here we go. So why don't we do this while we're uh, totaling up the scores? We'll take a commercial break now. You're listening to Mac Maloney's Military Exile Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. The whole gang is here. We're playing World War II trivia tonight. Uh, General Tom uh, from uh, Holmes Rod Troops is joining us. Also, Phil Orbanes from uh, Winning Moves, uh, the company that makes uh, different kinds of Monopoly 
risk, the Rubik's cube. How's that going, Phil? What's the uh, big? Well, what's, so so far, game sales have been very strong in the COVID era. Oh, good. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Juan Juan's favorite is shoots and ladders. Is that still a big seller? <laughs> exactly. You know, it's yeah. pretty, shoots that's, and that's ladders. Pretty demanding. Okay. Candyland. Yeah. Candyland is another Candyland, one. Of my yeah. yeah. Gets into that. That's okay. right. Got to know your colors for that one. Yeah, I love <laughs> Candyland. Wow. Well, well, you are a uh, TV star, man. I swear you did mm -hmm. great. All right. So on, on that note, why don't we take a commercial break now? And we'll be right back after this. You're listening to Mac Maloney's Mill Track Cell Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. There's a monster in Tokyo Bay, hundreds of feet tall and breathing fire. It's able to destroy whole cities, sink entire battle fleets, and knock swarms of jet fighters from the sky. But there's another even more dangerous resident of the bay. A secretive psychopath intent on covering the planet with nuclear-armed booby traps unless the world's population bends to their demands. Meanwhile, a mysterious group of reborn medieval warriors has taken to the air. Strange signals are being picked up from outer space, and witnesses report seeing hundreds of ghost planes flying in the night skies over Tokyo. Sailing off the coast of Japan aboard the United American Navy's mega aircraft carrier, the USS USA, it's Hawk Hunter, the wingman. He must investigate these unusual occurrences while trying to thwart the criminal's apoleptic plan. But will his actions save the planet or lead to World War IV? Find out in Mac Maloney's exciting new novel, The Jericho Storm. Filled with dozens of dogfights, sea battles, and brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat, The Jericho Storm is book 21 in Mac's best-selling Wingman series. Team up with Hawk's longtime allies, as well as a few new ones, including fighter pilots Switchblade Steve Ward and Jocko Johnson. That's Wingman 21, The Jericho Storm. On sale now at your local bookstore and on Amazon. Welcome back, everyone, to Mac Maloney's Mill Track Saw Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. This is Macaroni. Wow, what a show we uh, have for you tonight. We're in the middle of our, uh, one of our frequent World War II trivia contests, and what a battle it has been. Let me very quickly introduce the contestants. Okay, first of all, watching from the sidelines, girls, it's uh, the very famous one one. Hello, Mac. This is fun. It's a great mm. show and great questions. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, hats off to the it's guy really that uh, came up with them. But we know if he's wearing a hat, he must be bald, right? We we're talking about an affair anyway. Listen, yes, <laughs> right, yes. We hear a voice <laughs> in the background say, "So look at classing up the show in ways that you wouldn't even imagine." <laughs> Our favorite good witch up there in Sideways New York is Raven. Is with us, Raven. Hi, it's me. I'm here. Hi, Raven. Thanks She's for there. having me. She's drinking expired beer that her... Uh, what? <laughs> well, the, the expired beer is gone. Oh, the expired beer is now gone. Okay, yes. That's only right. the sell-by date. This is right? not expired beer. Oh, on, not as bad. long as you're not expired, Raven. <laughs> don't worry not about yet. that. <laughs> See, I told you it was a refill. So. Okay, it's a refill. Okay, and at least the beer you're drinking now is uh, within the expiration date. Is that what we're saying? That's what I'm told. Right. right. It inspired me. I think it's okay. <laughs> All right, Jim go. was the last holdout, but we yeah, he's fallen for the rest of us. So listen, with the rest of us. So, uh, Raven, uh, once again, we have to comment on your new do, okay? Um, you just okay. look like so many Hollywood stars. It's it's uh, we we don't we can't write them down fast enough. So we're saying uh, one one you no you start the list. Uh, Zoe De Chanel, yeah. <laughs> Someone said, uh, 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 the girl in Friends, uh, what was her name? Um, Winona Ryder and Chrissy Hine from The Pretenders. How about that? Chrissy Hine. I'm, yeah. I'm still, I'm like going that. with her. Mm. I like that. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I like long hair. Uh, hats off to you, Russ Thomas. I like chicks with long hair. Can we say the word chicks? No, we cannot, unless you're referring to, uh, 
Chickens. Chickens. Young chickens. Wait a minute. Oh. Wait a minute. There's, a, there's a country band called the Dixie Chicks. Yes. They're called the Chicks now because you Not can't anymore. say Dixie Chicks. Yeah. Yeah, right. But you can say Chicks. Yeah. Okay. Well, Dangerous. that's what they're called now. For them, you can say Chicks because, you know, they're fading in the background. You don't have to worry about that. I, I met them personally when did they you were really? popular. You did? Yeah. Well, well, there's a band that uh, all it took is one word, you know, one sentence out of their mouths, and (laughs) there goes the career. Anyway, another show. They were were good, too. Uh, Anyway, uh, that voice you hear is uh, JoJo, Jocko Johnson, down there somewhere, swinging along in South Carolina somewhere. JoJo, how are you doing? (laughs) Okay, Mac, how are you? Okay. How many times have you had Italian food in the past three days? Tonight, I had chicken and pajamas. Chicken, Okay, that's chicken parmesan for anyone wondering. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, yesterday, I had pizza with my garum sauce on it. Oh, that Which stuff is... that made out of made out of freaking mice intestines? No, that stuff? No, anchovies. Oh, jeez. Anchovies. <laughs> anchovies. All right, that's it. It's at, let me tell you, if you ate it, you wouldn't. Not in a million know, freaking years, because we know what they put in that. I hate it. Freaking Rovins. Just Italian anchovies, salt, and a little oil, and they mix uh, it up. And let it no, they leave it out. Uh, it's it's fish they no, leave I'd out in the sun for a no, month. No. Yeah, already I'd we're vomiting. I'd ants than anchovies. Let's stop it. Yeah. You, know, you, okay. you guys are nuts. Raven's vomiting. We have to stop. It's excellent. Okay. Who said that? What do you say? I, I didn't he said the taste I is said excellent. Anchovy paste is excellent. All right, let's get. We'll get to you. Okay, okay I'll, friend, all you right. need to get a bottle. All right, Jim, garum, I'll have to try which it. Is what the ancient Romans ate. It Raven. it will make anchovy paste right the else kick its butt. Wow. Okay. On that note, why don't we go to uh, Agent X up there in New Hampshire somewhere? <laughs> His lights are turned on. Thank you for having down. me, and uh, I'll agree with one one that. They were excellent questions, except for one, possibly two. Wow, well, okay. Not excel, <laughs> Eight out of ten, they were excellent. I okay. Still, I would still agree. They were wow. really good questions. Well done. Hmm. Okay. Well, huh? okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Eight out of the ten, you know, were of your approval. Is that right? Are those the eight you got right? <laughs> The eleven out of ten. Yeah, let's uh, let's move. On. Eight, eight out of ten were modular. Let's eight. move okay. on. Jim Frankel, <laughs> famous literary agent. Jim Frankel, how oh, you doing? a ringing endorsement. Jim. Uh, yeah, really. You're in North Carolina. How you doing? I'm doing well, and, yeah. and I I'm still in shock that the questions have been so good. Yeah, I didn't know you had it. Yeah, excellent. Wow. <laughs> Did you say you're in shock that the question's so good? Yeah, you didn't think I, I had I, it in me? I didn't think you this is my freaking agent really. saying that. Okay. Well, I, I think you must have cheated. Did Doreen actually make these questions? Oh, wow, that's lowest to you. And they, yeah. Wow, <laughs> wow <laughs> that's Jim, it. This is your guy. That's, I know, it was my guy. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. Okay, all right. That's okay. I Tough know, love. I know. Well, what I've Tough love. I've wing. Hmm. Hey, as the British say, I'm just pulling your foot. Yeah, well, you know, you, you quoted the <laughs> wrong people, that. believe me. Okay, so listen, let's move on from the pain, okay? Uh, also did, joining did, did, us. Did you, Matt, can we note that I was sticking up for you there? Thank you very much. We appreciate that, JoJo. <laughs> Phil O'Baines is down there uh, in Magnolia, Massachusetts. Just Google it. See what's going on down there. Phil, how are you doing? I'm doing very fine tonight, and I find the questions that you've researched and presented to be stimulating. Oh, stimulating. Okay, hang That's on. That's a good word. <laughs> this, this might yeah. be the first time tonight, but, oh, it's not working. Oh, no. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Thank you, Raven. <laughs> All right, Raven, you get it covered. Okay. You get the point, it. right? Okay. Juan, send some batteries over. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I will. Batteries. Uh, General Tom. General Tom is joining us. And General, uh, why don't you weigh in? What do you think about the level of the questions? Really that bad? Uh, no, Mac. I, I thought they were. I thought they were pretty good. I'm yeah, pretty still good. lamenting that we're not playing teams because I would have actually scored better. <laughs> really? I remember I you were with one of these guys that would have pulled me up. <laughs> you were team with I'll X with last that. time. I'll remember be so that. sure about that. <laughs> I'll, I'll play with the general anytime. Okay, there you go. All right, there's our new bumper. Uh, so anyway, well, listen now, real quickly. I want to just want to say uh, to you, uh, General. First of all, you have in your bio I was reading today. Now you have four kids in four different high class colleges, right? Correct. Uh, three colleges where my money went to. One of them actually got a scholarship. <laughs> oh, so that was good. oh wow! Where's my thing? 
Where's my uh, rim shower when That's I need nice. <laughs> <laughs> Really? So what, what's it like? I mean, you know, everyone wants to grow up and go to these. I mean, name the colleges. I mean, they're well-named. They're well-known colleges, right? Ohio State and yeah. so on. Our daughter went to Texas A&M, so she's a fighting Texas Aggie. Our mm-hmm. oldest boy is a Buckeye out of Ohio State. And then we've got uh, another young man that went to James Madison. He went to ROTC. He was one on the scholarship, mm-hmm. so he's oh, cool. currently oh. – me at uh, Fort Riley, Kansas. He's a MI captain. Wow, huh? Good our, for him. Good oh, man. <laughs> and then our youngest son went to Radford University, and he is out in California doing some IT work with his fiance. Wow, there you go. Nice. The dream good come place. true. Okay, cool. Well, Thanks. you know, that's good. That's good. The guy in Ohio State, I bet you he has uh, some stories. I can imagine what it's like going to that college because. I know that their football stadium holds like 120,000 people. That's how big, that's how just enormous this place is in the pool, the, the political pool. Everything that they do out there is big, right? I mean, really. It is. His uh, first two years, he was in the dorm right next to the Horseshoe, their, their stadium. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went to one of the games with him. The other, That one's a pretty good-sized stadium now, over 100,000, too, is down in Texas A&M. Is that right? Yeah. And that's uh, – that's an unbelievable stadium oh. to attend the game in as well. Yeah, just to give you a comparison, a Patriot Stadium, okay, Gillette Place, which is a pretty modern stadium for the New England Patriots. I think it sits 65,000 people. So the Ohio Stadium fits almost twice as many as that. Okay. Football. Okay. I got to stick my nose in here. Guys, okay. you're all mispronouncing this. It's the Ohio State University. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> what the f- Okay. Just to be clear. one in Miami, right? Well, listen. Well, that's 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 that one. No one counts. Yeah, that does not count. So, general, yeah, just why, isn't that why they say it that way? Though? Yeah, it, it, no, they do, they do say it that way too. I look at general. Yeah, they, uh, my son would definitely be correcting me on that. Okay, I'm right. sure you're right. The Ohio State. Okay, so general, tell us a little bit, you know, about your association with homes for our troops. Please. So I've been with Homes for Our Troops now for about five years. It's a, a national nonprofit. I'm actually sitting in our headquarters. It's located just outside of Boston in Taunton, Massachusetts. So not too far from Phil. Um, we've been around since 2004, and our mission is to build specially adapted custom homes across the country, and then we donate them to the most severely injured post-9/11 veterans to enable them to rebuild their lives. Um, Even though we're a national charity, we don't see what we do as charity. We really see it as a moral obligation of the citizens of our country to repay a very small portion of a debt that can never be repaid. These troops and their families that voluntarily served and then greatly sacrificed so the rest of us could continue to enjoy our freedoms every single day. Yep. Thank you. Absolutely. uh, Well said. Yep. Yep. Since 2004. We've uh, built and donated 328 homes. The last one we did was Damn. just a couple of days ago out in Sacramento, California. Uh, oh. we'll be giving away number 329 this Saturday just outside wow. of Las Vegas, Nevada. Wow. Huh? That's awesome. All right. We have to go. clap. Please, everyone, let's go. Wow. Yeah, if I don't clap, I'm going to cry. Right. So, so and, these, and didn't you tell me what's the medium? I mean, these are, these are homes. These are like well-built and, you know, fairly expensive homes, right? They're, uh, they're custom homes. We uh, One of the unique things about us, Mac, is the veterans tell us where they want to live. We go out, find the land, mm. uh, bounce it off the veteran, the family, make sure that is where they want to put their forever home. And then we get in negotiations, buy the land. We need about an acre to properly site the home. Okay. Um, we'll buy it, find a custom home builder in the area, hire them, and build them a home from the ground up. Damn. The home is about – it's a single story. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2,800 square foot, four bedroom, That's two good. bath, and it's got uh, more than 40 special adaptations inside of it to try and restore some of that freedom and independence that they mm-hmm. sacrificed for us. Wow, that's a big house. That's a big one, one story house. That's cool. And so then you told uh-huh. us once too that uh, there was a um, uh, there was a percentage that that people who get into this program, uh, people in this situation who actually get in this program, like 85 percent of them just go out and they just become one with the world, right? Well, uh, we got several things. First, before they move into these homes, there's a lot of additional stress that you can imagine in the family uh, because of family members, spouse, caregiver, friends, trying to help these veterans 
uh, do some of the daily tasks that we all take for granted. Mm -hmm. Once they've moved into our homes, our veterans, more than 95 percent of our veterans tell us that the overall stress across the entire family has gone down. Yeah, yeah. And that enables enables a lot of things You know, on the employment side. After moving into our homes, the employment rate of our veterans doubles. The employment rate of our spouses and caregivers more than triples. See, wow, Great. think about that, man. That's you fantastic. Know, there's something that works. I don't get it. You know, we can debate this for whether the government themselves shouldn't be doing this, but this is something that works. And, um, you know, so Home Strat Troops, thanks so much. We've been friends with you guys for a while. Thank you for coming back on. We appreciate it. Put it up with us. Thank I'll, I'll you so much. Yeah. Back with you guys. I really do. General. And now. Uh, Thanks so much for your support. Okay, so here we go. It's an amazing service, and, you know, we always ask ourselves, you know, why can't this be done in the private sector? But, you know, we know why. We we know the answer. On on a huge scale, or do it in the public sector. You know know how much money uh, the—we're going to start again. You know how much money the friggin' Veterans Administration gets? It's like the third—it's the third one at the teat. okay? It makes—it has, like, billions and billions of dollars, almost like the Defense Department— not good. Anyway, okay, so good thing there's something, Holmes Rod Troops, uh, helping a small part of a big problem. What's the website, Tom? HFOTUSA.org. Okay, HFOTUSA.org. Yep. Got it. Right, here we go. So should we continue with the World War II trivia contest? You ready? Yep. Is everyone ready? Let's go. Okay, I see Jocko doing... Uh, Let's roll, men okay. and ladies. Raven, do we have a you know, score? Raven, you look like Cher for a minute. You had a look. Oh, don't say oh, that. Don't, come on. Don't flatter What's me a, that much. night's over, she's going to look like if everybody I, in If I look like her. Cher, I'm, I'm quitting. I'm going to Vegas. <laughs> no, no get it. Oh, you like get a it. Cher look. I don't know. The job is an take impersonator. Take it easy, Wani. Take it, it easy. Just pop calm in. down. Calm down. Wine. I just want to know how much is left in her glass. In a gla- <laughs> Let's see. Give us, a, give, us a, give us an update. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right let's I got see. another one ready. Yes. <laughs> Keep throwing it up. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so why don't we do this? Why don't we uh, start the second round of the trivia contest? Raven, do you have a score? If not, just I have make, a score. I think I mixed up two people on the first question, so I might be off by one on two people. Okay. But <clears throat> General Tom, I am showing seven. Seven for General Tom. Go ahead. Uh, Phil, I have seven. Phil, also with seven. Go ahead. I have Jojo at five. Jojo, five. Uh Uh-oh. And then I think I mixed up X and Jim. Um, So X, I have three, and Jim, I have five. I'd say uh, Jim is probably five and X is three. Uh, I think I've got five right. Okay. You know know what? I, I didn't have, I'm only drinking plain lemonade here. Well, you. I thought I would be. I thought I would be sharp. You missed the memo. See, that was my big mistake. You missed the memo. Yeah. Okay. Because I know I do better. You know, a little tank. Do you do want us a little tank? Do you want us to wait? How long would it take you to um, <laughs> get a buzz on that? A little vodka or something. Joe, yeah, American made. Uh-huh. American made. Okay. So anyway, so why don't we go yeah, to the next sure. ten questions, and then at the end of the show, we will pick names out of the magic fishbowl of people who have written into us. And we'll win free prizes. Okay, here we go. Bump, bump, buddy, boom. This I is number 10, right, Mac? This is number 11. Number 11. Number 11. Well, I missed the question. Oh, okay. <laughs> she got into that vodka there, bro. You know what's going on. Hey, ready? <laughs> While you're waiting, I'll tell everybody that um, when we're all done, and I know when this is airing, I'm going to put a note up on my Facebook page. I've got about... 2,700 people who uh, see my Facebook posts. So Go ahead. Help yes. spread the word that way. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. That's okay. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks, James. Yeah. 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 The more the better. Uh, Maybe they can write us crazy uh, emails. Uh, <laughs> you know, we should send <laughs> you. Giant. From yeah. Star, baby. Yeah, we, we should send you some of the emails. We got. All right. Here we go. Um, during the five plus years of war, only one part of Britain was occupied by the Germans. Which part of Britain was it? During the five-plus years of war, only one part of Britain was occupied by the Germans. Which part was it? I actually know that answer. I do. Hawaii. All right, Jason. I saw it on TV. There's a show about it. That's it's right. It's not Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
If it wasn't on Drunk History or Mrs. Maisel. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was, it was a, it's not, definitely, it not, was a, definitely not BBC, Hawaii. BBC series about it. Okay, Dr- now I remember. Yes. Kind yep, of thing. yep, yep, no, I remember. Okay. I know because of you, Phil. Ah, uh-huh. good job. Is everyone raising their hand? Seconds? Is everyone good? Here we go. Yes. Okay. Why don't we start with the general, just for the heck of a general? Oh, man, you would have to start with me. I'm sorry. Back to this team thing. Um, <laughs> so I've only got half the answer. Go ahead. It, it was it was some islands, but I can't remember which one. Okay, ones. yes, you get a half a point. Right. Yes, yes. Go ahead, so, Phil, please. I'm hosed up. <laughs> yep, right. Phil, go ahead, Phil. It was not the Falklands. Oh, the, it was not yeah. the Falklands. Hang on. All right, did you pull my name? Yeah, go ahead, Phil. Okay, it was the Channel Islands of so, Jersey and Guernsey. Okay. All right, Jojo. Which, by the way, are tucked in near the Normandy coast, pretty far from England. Jojo, we're taking your word for it. Go ahead. He is, Phil is absolutely correct. Okay, Jimbo. Jersey and Guernsey Islands. Jim, what do you say? Yeah. Channel it, Islands. Of yeah. course. I, I knew this because of Phil. Because of a book he's written yes. called Spyopoly. It's the Channel Islands, of course. X. Yeah, the Channel Islands. Uh, I, I said the Falkland Islands earlier. Book. Yeah, the Channel the Islands. Yeah. They're these islands that are like right off the coast of France, actually quite a way away from Britain, but they're British occupied, British owned, and, and it was a British way of life there, the architecture and just the political and stuff. And I think right after the invasion of France is over. All of a sudden, Germans, boom, take over. There's four of them. I love to go out there. I knew someone out there for a while who ran a radio station out there and stuff, and just they seemed to be beautiful. From Yes. It was called know, Pirate Radio. What they talk about. Yeah, they had a pirate radio around there, right? Okay. Yeah. Right. They, still, they still have the pillboxes and the, yeah, the stuff. Bags. Yeah, the stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Raven, we good uh, score-wise? Good. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, wow. I really don't Can I get one one extra point since last time sure. was like an anchor? Anytime. You bet. <laughs> it was a good series. Okay, here TV. we go. Uh, this is a super question. Ready? Super question, which means nothing. Two points. What's a super question? <clears throat> Let's say two points. Two points. Two points. Oh, two, points. two points? Okay. Yep, here we go. What was the aluminum trail? <laughs> what was the aluminum trail? Okay. No. No, Lois said to me today, Mac Maloney's quiz book. That's what this is. Mac Maloney Paranormal Quiz Book. Ooh, that's a good one. We should do that sometime and test people's um, knowledge of things that might have happened. But you should take... Lois should take these questions to her class. Oh yeah, oh. these are some these are some hard questions. Uh, the fourth grade is beat. The fourth grade is believe me. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta show them. This year, beat them into the ground young. Yeah. Okay, this is not the year to do it though. Not the year to do it. These kids were Zoomers last year, and they're having a little bit of problem adjusting oh. this year. So okay, I bet they're having trouble. Adjusting. All right, here we go. That's a minute. Here we go. Uh, we will start with X because he looks so excited. X, go ahead, please. This is another one. I have no clue. I'm going to just assume it was a trail um, uh, that um, came from the Soviet Union to through Alaska, but I, I honestly have no no idea. Sounds like a book. Jim, please. Jim Franklin, big literary agent. Okay. I know the answer to this. Go ahead. You ready? Yes. <laughs> a rich vein of bauxite ore. <laughs> that was uncovered. <laughs> Go ahead. What is your answer, Jim? Please, big literary. I told you it's a rich vein of bauxite ore. Oh, okay. I thought I was. I thought you were doing material there. No clue at all. Excuse me for what? Where the heck was it? Not laughing. Uh, hey, Jojo, what was the aluminum trail? Uh, I have no idea, but okay. I think a wild guess. Go ahead. Say it was some like a. Uh, a flight path that planes See, flew the bombs. He knows. Oh, he knows. <laughs> I don't General know, Tom, just everything shot down for him. The aluminum trail, Tom. Yep. So JoJo's on the right track. There it was over the Himalayas, I believe. Right. And it was the oh. resupply yes. route in for nationalist China. 
The Burma Road. The Burma it was just Road. parked by all the hopes of planes that went down. Phil, you agree? I can tell you agree. <laughs> that sounds pretty good to me okay. because I didn't know. I, I just thought perhaps it was the uh, the locale of all those West Coast uh, aircraft factories. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. Huh? Hmm. Uh, I like that, too. Okay. This is more interesting than, than a game. But, yeah, it was um, – they would take uh, they would they call it the hump and they would fly over yeah. the Himalayas, you know, from India to China, and so many planes crashed. It was like an aluminum trail up and down the mountains, which is weird. So if you go mountain climbing in the Himalayas, where you know, you think everything is pristine and clear, and everything, you, you good chance you're going to come upon the wreckage of a um, a World War II plane. You know, that's just the way it was. Funny place to crash. Uh. Not that there's yeah. any really funny place to crash. So, okay, why don't another, we go? On? Another good question. I would have, I, I would have guessed the hump, but not the aluminum t- trail. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure it was actually called aluminum. Okay, but here we go. Yeah. <laughs> so I have General Tom getting a point for that. Okay. Uh, two points, right? Yes, two points because it's a big question. Two points. Yeah, two oh, points. Super super question. Question. And, and, and JoJo super gives question. JoJo gets two points too. JoJo gets two points. Okay. Yep. I'm like a genius, and I don't even know. Well, and Phil does, too, because <laughs> Phil agreed with him. Okay, so here we go. Phil got two. <laughs> I'm up there with a general from West Point. Come on. Okay, go. You are, Jocko. Are you ready? I'm, I'm we're, going to you, we're going to you first on this question, okay? Genius. You ready, Jojo? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. I'm ready. I can bullshit my way This out. is also a super question. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> two Nazi super weapons, the V-1 and the V-2 rockets, were basically designed as unguided missiles to be shot from afar and into enemy territory. With Which European city received the most hits of V-1s and V-2s during the war? I'm going to say re- London, but it probably wasn't. Let me repeat. Two Nazi super, super, little, two Nazi super weapons. The V-1 and V-2 rockets were basically designed as unguided missiles to be shot from afar and into enemy territory. Which European city received the most hits from V-1s and V-2s during the war? Me? Jacko? And this is a super question, by the way, Raven. Oh, super question. I like that. I like you super know, question the, instead the, of the actual, the, the most... Uh, Logical answer would be London, but See, they weren't yeah. guided, so who knows who they hit. This is the guy who just got his World War II encyclopedia. <laughs> Killing no, time, yeah. turning pages. <laughs> okay, I, are we ready? Are we ready? Jocko, yeah. you better be ready. Let's go. I'm going to say London. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Phil. Why don't you go next, Phil, please? Well, uh, I definitely am inclined to say London. But I re- remember reading somewhere that Rotterdam got a lot of hits. Okay. Right. And if this is a trick question, I'm going to say Rotterdam. Okay. General Tom, please. Hey, General what are Tom. What going for over there? Yeah, I can only go with London. Okay, go ahead. Jimbo, what do you say? Jim Franco, big-time literary yeah. agent. I was going to say London, too. X. Your last Rotterdam. Hope. Our last hope. Wow. Raven, let it uh, be recorded that no one got the answer correct. Okay. Paris. Ooh, what's zero. the answer? Paris. 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 Oh, Paris. Wow. No, not as glamorous. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ready? You're saying that Paris got more hits by no, B1s no, no. and B2s? No, no, no. Here it is. The answer oh, is... I was just throwing that out there. I don't know. Oh, okay. I, was gonna say, yeah, I don't think they got any hits. The why answer would is... They go, can I just ask these guys, why would they say Rotterdam? What was there that they were bombing? They're, they're um, mixing up... That a, was the a, a assembly area. area for the... Uh, Heavy water? water? Yeah, this, oh, this was after the Allies had landed and were... <laughs> Correct. Uh, you know, it was oh. a key port for them. What a tease. I bet you I know the answer. Antwerp. Antwerp is the correct answer. Antwerp, uh, Belgium. Yep. Antwerp is know. what I meant See? to say. I should have known. <laughs> and let me, I'll, I'll, hey, I'll explain. Hey, Americans. Right. Antwerp, Rotterdam, it's all the same. Oh, no, I knew it. There you go. Why, it's country. in the same country. <laughs> so is Boston and L.A. <laughs> it's frigging. All right, listen. So what, what oh, it was was. See, I am a genius. The, uh, the uh, Antwerp was, at the time, the largest port in Europe, port. okay, it's huge. Yeah, but it was yeah, down yeah, this yeah. estuary, right? So the British were in charge of capturing Antwerp, which they did eventually, but they never cleared out this estuary, which controlled the approaches to the port. So it was never used because the Germans were there 
and they would bomb everything coming in. It's just a little slight, you know, mis mix up in plans oh. there. So, yeah, Antwerp got like about five hundred, about two hundred more than London um, um, V ones oh. and about fifty more V twos. So it was a shorter distance. So it was easier for the Nazis to launch yeah. these things. Another good question. And mm -hmm. Antwerp is where the Battle of the Bulge, that was there. That's why yeah. they went for it. Close. Right. Yeah. Yep. Right. Okay, good, wow. Good All right, here we go. Thank you, X. Right. Did I get anything for that? I don't know. Who got, no one uh, got anything. No one got anything, children. All right, here we go. <coughs> here we go, see? Uh, See, I said I'm a genius and I don't know it. Which is the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. which is the, <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. Which of the following stories is not true? Which of the following stories is not true? <laughs> I love this. Eisenhower had up to 15 mistresses during the war. <laughs> Churchill made sure the monkey population of Gibraltar stayed constant during the war. Germans ate dogs during the war with dash hounds in great demand mm -hmm. because they tasted the best. I got dogs. <laughs> one, one. I'm out. I'm outraged if that was true. Okay, we get that. <sighs> okay, should I, I better read that one again? Read which that the, one again. Which of the stories is not true? Which is not true? Eisenhower right. had up to 15 mistresses during the war. Churchill made sure the monkey population of Gibraltar stayed constant during the war. Germans ate dogs during the war with Dachshunds in great demand because they tasted the best. I feel like I have a good answer. Do you really? We'll one. come to you. We'll come to you. You'll be, you'll be number six. Hey, Raven, and before when you said well, maybe hamburgers number one. were made in Germany, that's incorrect. They were invented in a little place in Connecticut that is still there. What? Hamburgers? Yeah, hamburgers. They take the little patties and they put them in this kind of thing like that was a toaster. It would open up. They put the burger on a little grill. They had little hot wires in there. Yeah. This... Cook them. I swear to God. Uh, they're Jojo, they were in, cooking in hamburgers in know. like the 1600s. I made a quesadilla in my microwave today, so... Oh, really? They were made in America. So it was good. Even Mexico. All right, here we go. All right, Check so Quesa one. quesadillas were invented in Brockton, Massachusetts. Yeah, really? Yeah, look at the label, right? <laughs> it must have been. Oh, no, I shouldn't say that. Okay. Okay, so here we go. So why don't we go to just to make a mat? X again. X, please. <laughs> Which of those stories is not true? Eisenhower had a busy job, and he did have a mistress, but he didn't have 15 of them. Wow, he said that with such authority. Okay, Jim, how, what do you say? Jim Franco. I, I was thinking the exact same thing about Ike. I, I don't see how he could have possibly had that many mistresses. Huh. You know, well, I was, knew that he had at least one, but 15 just doesn't sound right. He was overachieving. Besides, no? Even though you're mis mispronouncing it, Dachshunds. Are good tasting. That's food. an inside. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Okay, that's uh, the, the voice who knows. <laughs> I don't. Wow, that took an unexpected turn. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Okay, here we go. Jojo, what do you say, Jojo? Uh, do I get extra credit if I knew who his uh, mistress's name was? Yes. Case Summersby, I okay. believe, yep. was his only that's one right. and only love. What are the only fourteen? What are the other fourteen? I have no idea about them other two. General, what was her job? Right, oh, come on. We're a family show. Oh, yeah, <laughs> unless you, what was her job? If you want, she's a secretary. Uh, no, she's his driver, chauffeur. chauffeur. Or, right, chauffeur. She's driver and secretary. Right. Yeah, she huh? Kept him very calm. Both kept him calm. Good. We needed that guy to be calm. So, yeah, General, I'm, I got a feeling that you are agreeing with the with the with the with the with the, with the gang, right? Eisenhower. Phil. Yeah, I I agree too. He spent okay. so much time with. K. Summersby, I don't think he had time for 14 others. <laughs> wow. I'll tell you, I think, okay. can, I think you run the rest of not, Manning Ike. I have not okay. excelled, or have not, I have not distinguished myself. Go ahead. Can I um, get two points if I say what nationality Kate Summersby was? No, that's racist. Irish. Why would we do that? I think we all know that answer. She's Irish, Irish, yeah. Forget about the two points. They duck two points from him. All right, here we go. Uh, <laughs> Irish. <laughs> All right, here we go. Because you wouldn't bring it up otherwise. All right, the 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 Gibraltar women. The Gibraltar monkey story is true. 
Churchill had a superstition that if monkeys ever left Gibraltar, it would cease to be a British colony. (laughs) So he imported monkeys there all during the war. That's a great story. The dog meat story is true. Dog meat was known as blockade (laughs) mutton in Nazi Germany because the country was seriously blockaded during most of the war. The Nazis raised and slaughtered dogs for their meat. And that Dachshunds were the top of the menu. The first... Uh. The first story is not. No one needs to hear this. I'm sorry. (laughs) After owning three dachshunds, I'm shocked. (laughs) Raven, it's a cruel world out there. Oh, I hate it. The first story is not true. Ike only had one mistress during the war. Okay, here we go. Ready? Yep. Uh, Bonus question: True or false? The USS Tuna Fish had the highest torpedo to sinking (laughs) ratio of the war. (laughs) I was in there for a laugh. Thank you, X. (laughs) <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Operation Market Garden was a huge airborne invasion of Holland in 1944, <laughs> aimed at capturing four strategic bridges, which would lead directly into Germany and shorten the war by almost a year. True or false? Market Garden was ultimately a failure because the British contingent charged with securing important roadways between the bridges stopped for a four o'clock tea on the first day and didn't resume the attack for hours, losing valuable time and momentum and ultimately losing the battle and thus prolonging the war for another year. I'll go first. I'll read it again. Operation Market Garden was a huge airborne invasion of Holland in 1944 aimed at capturing four strategic bridges which would lead directly into Germany and shorten the war by almost a year. True or false, Mike Garden was ultimately a failure because of the British contingent charged with securing important roadways between the bridges, stopped for a four o'clock tea on the first day, and didn't resume the attack, the attack for hours. Afterwards, losing valuable time, momentum, and ultimately losing the battle, and thus prolonging the war for another year. X. And Jocko already, jeez. I get always the first one, but... Sure. Jim. Um, it was a failure, but I don't think it was, it was a terrible failure, but I don't think mm-hmm. it was because of tea time. Oh, it wasn't. So that's a no then. That's yes. a false. Okay, Jim, please, Jim. True or false? I hate to say it, but I believe it's true because I could just see the Brits doing that's this. JoJo. It's a complete and total failure. It was a half-baked idea by Monty. It actually extended the length of the war. Yes. Because he probably was having tea because he had to decide everything was perfectly aligned to make sure that he got everything right. So is that true or false? Is it a true story or false story? I don't know. One, don't they have tea at 3 o'clock or at 4 o'clock? No, 4. It's 4. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll say it's That's what I've been reading lately. It's 4. 4 is time for tea. Jojo. I'll say it's true then because all the other things were true, isn't it? General, what do you say? General? False. Phil? I say false because that's exactly the mistake the British made at D-Day with Monty when they were so close to taking Khan. They took a break at 4 o'clock and mm. took two weeks to capture Khan as a result. Mm. Uh, it's a true story, true story. And uh, in between, they took over the, I believe, they took over the first bridge Went over the first bridge and wound up in this like small town, and then the whole thing just ground to halt. And if you remember, they were had different para, paratroop units, kind of like uh, you know dropping in, take over the bridge, and then the guys on the road would take over the road between the bridges. That was that was going to be the idea: secure the bridges, and then we're, we're going to be coming up the highway right behind you. And it didn't work that way because there was only one road, and the British had clogged it up for tea. And, and they didn't resupply them with heavy weapons they were supposed to because they later discovered that there was like a panzer division sitting there. Yeah, taking an hour and Nobody hour. knew. They had terrible intelligence. And they had they the wrong radios, to too. Them. Wrong radios. But cool. Uh, and the movie uh, Bridge Too Far is okay. It tells the British, the story about the British and on them really well. Everything else leading up to it is like, you know, kind of corny. But uh, yeah, it was kind of weird how they hung out and how they, how they withdrew and stuff. Kind of like a uh, heroic failure. Anyway, Hermann Goering, Hitler's obese and drug-addicted second-in-command, held 15 official titles during the war, including Commander-in-Chief of the Luftwaffe and Reich Marshal of Germany. 
of the three following titles, which one did Goering not have? Okay, which one didn't he have of the 15? Okay, here we go. Chief. It must be pronounced in German, in correct German. <laughs> well, Otherwise, it's a, it's a bogus question. Okay. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> X, doing material from the old country. Here we go. Ready? Ready? Of the, of the three following titles, which one did Goering not have? Chief liquidator of sequestered estates. <laughs> hang on, hang on. That gets the laugh. Chief War Minister of Prussia and Supreme Head of the National Weather Bureau. Which of those three was not a title that Goering had? Chief Liquidator of Sequestered Estates, Chief War Minister of Prussia, Supreme Head of the National Weather Bureau. Ever hear the story about Goering's brother? He was like anti-Nazi, anti-Hitler, and he couldn't get away with anything. Great, great movie. How long did he live? If they made it. No, he made it through the war. He, it's a very interesting story. Just read, just Google Goering's brother. Mm, that's cool. What okay, was the here, name of the movie? No, we haven't made it yet. Tim. Oh, I see. Okay, here we go. All right, everyone ready, Phil? We're going to throw it to you. Yeah, I... Uh I think it was the supreme head of the national weather because uh, he accumulated a huge amount of art personally because I think he was the uh, liquidator in chief of the states. Mm -hmm. And he was Prussian, and so the second one seems to make sense to me too. So I'm going with weather. General Tom. Weather. Joe Joe. I'm going to have to agree with the general and Phil. Although you would think if he was in charge of the Luftwaffe, he'd be in charge of the weather reporting. So I don't know if that's a tricky question, but I'm going to go with what they said. Okay. Jim. I don't believe he was the chief liquidator. Okay. And Arnold Schwarzenegger was the chief liquidator. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Doing material. X, go ahead. How about your Uncle Goring? Hauptkriegsminister Kreuzen, but that's not the answer. What is it? The answer is, uh, I agree with the other guys that I don't think he was the uh, weather chief. Okay, the answer was he was the weather chief. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Whoa! I knew it, I knew it. I should have said it. He was, um, Goering was not the chief war minister of Prussia. He was the prime minister of Prussia. Oh. Um, oh, 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 oh. Uh, but he was in, he was in charge. Just thought, it didn't matter. Now, here's the thing, the, the weird thing about this guy, okay? I mean, he was just, uh, you know, one of these really bad guys at the top of the Nazi party. But he was probably, you could probably make a uh, argument, he was the first environmentalist. Because one of the 15 titles was he was, you know, king of the uh, forests or something. And he put lots of those Bavarian forests, I'm just guessing, under government control and made them like public trusts and stuff like that. And that was like a real new kind of um, idea back then. So Goering was the environmentalist of the group. Of the yeah, insane, he wanted, good, he wanted cool places to hunt. Of the insane, yeah, he wanted, yeah, he was, he was like, um, he was like yeah. supreme leader of the hunt too. All right, here we go. He was like Bert Lahr in the Wizard of Oz. Yes, yes, I very much Bert Lahr. King Lars. of the forest. <laughs> there you go. What have you been drinking there, Raven? Raven, are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Uh, score wise, no one gets a point for that one, right? No one gets a point. All right, here we go. Good. It has been. It was, uh, you know, he used to be a pretty svelte guy, Goring, and yeah. when Baron Rock, he Ron, flew with uh, the Red Baron. Baron, Baron von Richter when was killed, he took over the uh, squadron. Right. He he also had a number of Jewish uh, okay. pilots right, in his go. squadron that he was very good friends with in World War One. Yes. yes. Yeah. Things changed. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. It has been said that World War II was a time of intense inter-service rivalry. Rival, oh I'm going to start that again. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hard word to say. Competition? Yes. Who have you been drinking, Mac? Uh, you know what? Hey, you want to know? Somehow, He's got Finding Bigfoot. <laughs> no, no. It's that uh, Greenhead um, IPA. 
Oh, oh okay. no. Why? Yeah. It's either Pete's, I'm either drinking Pistol Pete's beer or we left it here at some point, though. I can't imagine that happening. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, yeah, here we go. I think we, and I got this, this, uh, this smartphone just, it, 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 the light turns off every, you know, two seconds. Here we go. There's a setting. For that. We all do. Here we There's go. There's a setting. For setting. That. All right. It has been said that World War II was a time of intense inter-service rivalry. Rivalry. I gonna hang on. Here we go. It has rivalry. Been, I know. It has been. All right. Here we go. It has been said that World War II was a time of intense inter-service rivalry, with the war in the Pacific being a Navy slash U.S. Marine show, and the war in Europe being run by the Army. For the most part, this is true. True or false? Because of U.S. Army manipulations. In Washington, D.C., in August of 1942, FDR signed a wartime directive prohibiting the U.S. Marines from participating in the European theater. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. What's the question? Okay. Yeah, what's the question? <laughs> Don't make him repeat it. Want me to tell no, him back? No, 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 no. Well, here we go. Okay, hang on if I can get my new smart, smartphone to get smart. You know, I'm really anti these things. First of all, <laughs> it, it weighs like about five pounds. Oh, you know. right, here we go. But it's fun to hear you complain. It is cricket. It has been said. I'm going to get that. It has been said that World War II was a time of intense inter-service rivalry with the war in the Pacific being a Navy U.S. Marine show and the war in Europe being run by the Army. For the most part, that was true. True or false, because of U.S. Army manipulations in Washington, D.C. in August of 1942, FDR signed a wartime directive prohibiting U.S. Marines from participating in the European theater. Like, for instance, it wasn't the Marines storming the beaches at Normandy. Sounds like one one spitting his pit spittoon there. You chewing tobacco again there, Jasper? Not me. No. I was Raven. Okay. She was refilling her. It's uh, me. I was drinking some water. Water? Why? Okay. You okay? I got I'm good. I was going to open this other beer, but it's 6.9%, and I might pass away Ooh. if I drink that. So That's okay. Like Just do it on the radio. <laughs> pass away or pass out? Pass out. Both. Okay. Be great. Only if you're taking pharmaceuticals along with it. Listen. Okay, here we go. We'll go to, well, we'll go to Jocko. Mm -hmm. Jocko, yes or no? I'm gonna I'm gonna say negative. The Marines had a smaller force; they concentrated on that, and that's why they weren't sent to them. They, they, they didn't have the manpower. Phil. Well, I'm gonna say true, only because by uh, empirical evidence, the Marines had no role to play in Europe. General, general. I'm gonna say false. They didn't they didn't have the role because they just weren't big enough. Mm -hmm. They're just being used in the Pacific Theater. Jim Frankel, big time literary agent. Yes, I agree with the general. I, I think they they just didn't have enough people to be in both theaters, mm -hmm. and it was it was clearly more important to have Marines in the Pacific because of all those islands. X. I think this is a trick question, but I'm going to say false too. I I don't even think I don't think Roosevelt would have done that. Okay. Yeah, I agree. The answer is false. U.S. Marines served on Navy ships in the theater, provided bodyguard services in the U.K. and at other bases, and worked in special operations with the Royal Marines. They acted as intelligence officers, intelligence officers during the invasions of Sicily and Italy. You just don't hear them or see them, you know? It's uh, yeah. Interesting. a fun fact, fun fact, the word jawhead in Italian is testa da batatolo. Say it again? <laughs> testa means head. Testa that's del the new Ferrari that's coming out, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> testa del baratolo. Yeah, I think it's I think it sank off of off go. of Portugal. Hey, how about that? that. <laughs> talk about talk about a book waiting to be written. Okay. You remember they made that movie Jarhead? Wasn't Jake Gyllenhaal in that? Yes. That's yeah, right. It was. That's what happened to him. Yeah. Him, yeah. 
Can I tell you Ray, something, you're Raven? A movie diva, Ooh. aren't you? Raven, wow. can I tell you something? Can I tell you hey, something? What question is this, Mac? Uh, now we're up to eight. Eight, yeah. Or eight, eight, eight. I, I just want to add, pursuant to that last question, Go ahead. people don't realize uh, that uh, maybe we do now after having heard the answer. Go ahead. That Gen General MacArthur had more Army infantry soldiers yes, in the under his command in the Pacific than he ever had Marines. That's true. They had a lot of the a lot of army took uh yes. were fighting in the Pacific as well. All right, here we go. And they don't they don't get a lot of credit. The famous Battle of Britain was fought through the summer and fall of nineteen forty almost exclusively between Texas uh, yeah, Texas bombers. Let's start again. <laughs> The famous Battle of Britain was fought through the summer and fall of 1940 almost exclusively between Nazi bombers flying from occupied France and the RAF's best fighter pilots. The most famous plane from this battle was the British Spitfire. It's been glamorized in books, movie, movies, music, and on TV, but there are actually two heroic British fighters fighting for England during this time and the least known one actually shot down more German aircraft than its famous cousin. Name the other aircraft. Yes. I'll, I'll read it again real quick. <laughs> the famous Battle of Britain was fought through the summer and fall of 1940 almost exclusively between Nazi bombers flying from occupied France and the RAF's best fighter pilots. The most famous plane from this battle was the British Spitfire, it's been glamorized in books, movies, music, and on TV. But there are actually two heroic British fighters fighting for England during this time. And the least known one actually shot down more German aircraft than its famous cousin. Name this other aircraft. We're going to, to, we're going to go to Phil. The Hawker Hurricane. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> General. Shaking his head. Okay. Hurricane. Jojo. Hurricane. Everyone got a Jimbo. I wrote down here, Hurricane. MX. Got it, of course. Yeah, I, I, I like a hurricane. Everyone gets a point. And you know what? The, the reason I threw this in here is that I, I get this fact, okay? Um, although the Spitfire attracted more attention, the hurricanes were more numerous and responsible for more German losses, especially right. early in the part of the battle. You get this. The turnaround time the re, to rearm and refuel a Spitfire was 26 minutes. Okay, while a hurricane was nine minutes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you, that's what happens when you put Rolls Royce engines on those on those planes, there, boys. Right? They need a little work in between. Run yeah. by a lot of Polish so and uh, other oh. Allied air forces. Yeah, the hurricane exile. And I I, I read I once one, one brief little Spitfire tale. Uh, many years ago, uh, the owner of a restored Spitfire. Let me sit in the cockpit in his hangar, and mm -hmm. he closed the canopy. And yep. I would say within five seconds, I was suffocating for air. Yeah, really, <laughs> huh? Because the, the enclosure was so small. Mm -hmm. um, that would drive me A nuts. lot of those pilots, if they were on missions for a long period of time, needed help coming out of the, the uh, yeah. cockpit because their legs were so cramped. Right. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. It's a cool airplane, and when you look at it, it's very cool, and they always say if it looks good, it flies good and stuff, and that usually makes sense. The Hawker Hurricane is like kind of a more hefty kind of airplane, but I think at one point I read that the Spitfires would go after the fighters and the Hurricanes would shoot down the bombers. Yeah. But anyway, here we go. Okay. Here we go. Where is hell? We got the uh, scores on that there, Raven? Yep. Okay. Uh, yep. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Everybody got one, right? Everyone go. got a point. Oh. Going insane. Here we go. Army and Navy have been playing each other in football since 1890. Which team holds the most wins? I thought it was volleyball, uh, <laughs> judging from Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm hilarious tonight, so excuse you me. <laughs> You're always hilarious. And here we go. I think Navy is the answer. Here we, na so. here we go. I'm going to save the two Army guys for last. Phil. 
What you say? Yeah. I think it's Navy because Navy had, you know, in the modern era, a long run of victories. Uh huh. Jojo. Navy. Jim. I say Army. Oh. X, X, X Army guy, X. Whether it's true or not, I got to go with the Army. Army. General. <laughs> true and we saved times. you for last, General. Uh, I wish my alma mater could have done something different, but it's Navy. It's Navy. To date, Navy has has 60 wins against Army. It's 49, not bad. Mm. There have been mm. seven ties, or as the Navy oh. website said, as uh, Phil mentioned recently, recently Navy has kicked Army's ass in 11 of the last 15 games. Wow. That's, that's yeah, just sad. Yeah. Awesome. General, you want to comment on it or... Well, there there have been some there have been some wins there. I don't know about how many ass kickings. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But wouldn't it just just you know really out of the box for a second? Wouldn't it make sense for the army or navy to recruit some really highly you know recruited guy like a quarterback or something, and and have them have a really good team for I think just for recruitment and stuff like that, and just for exposure. No, no, no. it would be got to serve in the military after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you yeah. serve in the reserves for four on. years, like what's his name did there, the, the basketball player there. Wasn't that, that guy's Steven name? Robinson. Robinson. Right. Yeah. Anyway, but you see, they have to have a problem. I remember when the Giants had Phil McConkey. He was a uh, Annapolis graduate wide receiver. Yep. And yep. when he when he played before he got you know released, they realized that he had problems, and he was a helicopter pilot. He huh. had inertia, and uh, you know problems with his ears. So they they they, they released him. They gave him, I guess, a rec- uh, reserve commission. You know. Yeah, you mean uh, he uh, couldn't play. He had uh, vertigo. Vertigo. Yeah. Oh, mm. that's like, if you're a helicopter yeah. pilot, you don't want that. All right, here we go. We got the, the 20th question, plus we have a bonus question. Okay, here we go. What was the name of Hitler's German Shepherd? Oh, I noticed. Oh, I, knew, I knew this. I got to think about it. I got it. Oh, I think I know what it is. I'll go first. I got it, too. Okay. We ready? I'm going to go to Phil because he looks very confident there sitting in his mansion in Magnolia. I don't know. I I seem to remember the name Hildy. Okay. (laughs) Kim Philby. The the Brett Kim Philby. That'd be a hell of a coincidence. I guess we're Hildegard. Uh, uh, General Tom. Sorry. Tom. Hmm. Go ahead, General Tom. I'm sorry we didn't hear you. Oh, Blondie. Okay. Blondie. Jojo. I was close. <laughs> That's it. Jojo. Blondie. And he whacked her first to make sure the pills work. That's it. <laughs> Dirty rat. Well, you two guys, you lucky guys. Jimbo. I had Shotzi. Oh, okay. Shotzi. And uh, Switch. I mean, uh, X, what'd you have? Lassie? No, it's Blondie. <laughs> Let's <laughs> But okay. Chauncey was a good guess. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, maybe, hey, maybe in like Blondie in Germany. Movie. Blondie is the name. Blondie is the name. Yeah. Okay, so we get the general got it. Jojo got it. German. Who else got it? 50, 50%. Uh, sorry, we have General Tom. Uh, yep. We have Jojo and X. Okay. All right, so we're at the end of the round. What is the score, Raven? We'll have a little bit okay. of a uh, drum roll here. So we have Jim is at 10. We have General Tom at 14. We have Phil at 11. We have Jojo at 14. And we have X at 8. Oh, it's a tie between Jocko and the Jim. Don't don't question. Don't question her. I'm doing tallies. Okay. All right, then I have a runoff question. You ready? For Tom and Jocko. Thank you, everyone. That was close for those uh, questions that everyone think think were too hard. Okay, here we go. Ready? This is for the general and Jocko. 
The Grand Championship. True or false? Hitler was once diagnosed as having colossal flatulence. Bro. Uh, uh. oh. Jojo. True. True. That's General. why he became a veterinarian later on. Veterinarian. <laughs> you know what I mean? He cared for, <laughs> he cared for poodles in the morning he and bomb, bomb Europe at dogs. night. General, what do you say? True. True. They both yeah, win. Yeah, that was definitely true. Here we go. Hitler had digestive problems in his entire life, and most especially in adulthood. He was a strict vegetarian and ate a high fiber diet, which didn't help his stomach problems. But the furious tooting problem was so bad he could clear entire banquet halls. <laughs> <laughs> he should have bottled it, used it as a weapon. <laughs> okay, get that. He probably had a gluten allergy. Right, yeah. The, no the, gluten. The rumor that his toots were used to power the V2 are totally yeah. untrue. Totally well, <laughs> he had enough. Uh, Hitler's oh doctors God. frequently inject him, injected him with cocaine, metamphetamines, testosterone, and strychnine, and an strychnine. Elk, yeah, and an effort to help the problem, but nothing worked. And we wonder why he was crazy. Really? Yeah. Right? right. So I asked that you should have taken more strychnine. Okay. Yeah, to get That's that rat poison, isn't it? Out that you could buy it like Life Savers in a store. Isn't, isn't, yeah, right. Isn't, uh, isn't strychnine rat poison? Yeah, I know it's a poison okay. for sure. Yeah, they had yeah. they had uh, things over there. The Beatles took them later on in life called prellies, and they were methamphetamines. They they were the methamphetamines were was yeah. invented by Germany in the thirties. Yeah. They gave right. them to their soldiers, and you could buy them over there like yeah, like lifesavers, right? And they were like really, really very high speed, very, very long lasting um. speed. Yeah. They wanted to know why they were able to you know, use the Blitzkrieg and conquer France and like never right. sleep. <laughs> all those guys are high. They're all high on this, and and that's it, how the Beatles did like eighteen thousand performances yeah. in, in like the, twenty in, sets a day in ten months. <laughs> <laughs> twenty twenty minute sets a day, and then sleep in, okay. a, in a room the size of a bathroom. I right, well, listen. We got a tie between Tom, General Tom, and Jocko. Let's please clap for them, please. Okay. They're clapping for themselves. Good job, guys. Yeah. Everyone Thank did you. so good. These right. were really good questions. They were great questions. Well, they don't, 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 don't. I think they were good. I think um, we had good answers, and uh, that we might have learned a lot tonight. It took a while to put it together and fill my hat off to you, okay? Because you it's got a, an extra question? It's I'll kind take of like a, a dive. pain in the ass. To, you want an extra question? I got one. Do you? Go ahead. I'll take a dive for the job. Okay. Here we go. So, yeah. did David end up meeting Lana in 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days? Yes or no? I didn't want to. Hang on, me. hang on. No. I'll Who said yes. no? I'll say yes. I'm going to say. Okay, Jocko's right. Oh, there what we go. Say yes. You didn't, win. <laughs> you didn't let us bet. You didn't let us. So they're, they're, they're together? Sorry, yes. I'll let you next time. The happy, the happy <laughs> couple are together? That's excellent news. They're not together, no. Oh, no. They just met. They just met. Okay. <laughs> 90 day bachelorette they're going to get married in 90 days 90 day fiance they oh. get married in 90 days oh I see okay that's true love. but this guy was being catfished so it was a whole thing what catfished. does that mean being catfished from down south that's, what, that's his diet down there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that he was like being led on what do you think oh okay all, all right Raven I have to give you one of these esoteric questions back uh. Okay. In the movie Tin Man, Two minutes. which we discussed earlier, in what part of Boston was the Tin Man actor born? Oh, God. Oh, man. He doesn't know. The, the northern part. Yeah, the northern part of Boston. <laughs> North Boston. I have no idea. <laughs> He's from Dorchester. No. Name, I think it's McDonough. I'm a New Yorker. I yeah, don't how know. How does she know? I don't even know. <laughs> Tell us. East I don't Boston? I know his name. Dorchester. No, is it East Boston? No. He's, Dorchester. I think his name's McDonough. I can't remember. Oh, it must be Dorchester. Our neighborhood. South. Oh, good. This is what we need. Another hero. So look, no. uh, you probably rode the bus with them when you him, were Lady Bulger, and this the Tin Man. Well, listen, I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. 
and we all just got together for Homes for Our Troops, which is this uh, organization that builds homes for our disabled veterans. I hate to use that word. In, in post-9-11 action, meaning the Afghan war and the Iraqi war, and, and makes these homes more, just it makes it a little bit easier for them to move around. And then they build them the home, they give them the home, they rip up the mortgage, give them the keys, they deserve it. Homes for our troops, and like, uh, isn't it like 88 cents of every dollar goes right into, right to the veterans' cause, General? Yeah, almost 90 cents of every dollar since our inception in 04. Mm-hmm. See, oh. If you know the charity business, that is like very, very high. No kidding. Very no high. Kidding. And if you go online, you see everyone, you get a five-star report every time that someone, you know, reports on Homes for Our Troops, really, Homes for Our Troops. And so as part of the gang, as part of the show tonight, we're going to donate 250 bucks, okay, to them. Uh, it's not a lot because we hear you – t- you wrote me the other day and you said, didn't someone donate a half a million dollars to the, to the cause a little while ago? Or did I read that wrong? Oh, we've we've had uh, some sizable donations. Really? Yeah. We've, we've had a we've had a couple of donors that are underwriting complete home builds. So we get some really great patriotic uh, Americans out there that nice. support the cause. Ah, that's cool, man. It's spread the money around, man. I love it. Gosh. Okay, be great if someday someone on our show, you know, hit that level. It'll be cool. But anyway, until that That'd moment, we're waiting for JJ to toss in a half a million bucks here. Homes for our troops. I'm working on it. I'm, I'm playing Publishers Clearinghouse every day. I, oh, boy. <laughs> Might be a long way. Like Ten times a day. Homes for our troops, okay? Homes for our troops. Just Google them and uh, see the great job they do. General, thanks very much. We'd like to have you on again sometime. Just ask our, t- our questions. Ten top questions for the general. Would you do that? Sure. Okay. Glad now, to. Let me ask you another question I asked you off air earlier because you're you're close to, to Boston. You're down in Taunton. Okay. You mentioned mm-hmm. that you're close to Phil because Phil's up there with all the rich people in Magnolia. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what Would you not come out I, with us? I've heard about them, Mark. Oh, uh, you know, I've, I've heard about them. I've been to your house, Phil. Uh, Phil has a beautiful house right on the water, right on the rocks where they wrote the poem, uh, Wreck of the Hesperus, right there. Very, very nice until really? the, until the storms come, right, Phil? Uh, it's missing twenty shingles on the roof right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, kind of gets hit on that northeast side. Just in the last six weeks. Nice. Oh my God! It's been worse. Yeah. All right, let's get back to the question at hand, General. Will you go out drinking with us? Will you have beers with us, General? Yeah. I'd be glad to sometime. Uh, yeah. Okay. You know, that's a little, the one one, you don't know, think that's a little. Is it okay that I was in the Navy? And, uh, well, you well, see, now you're wrecking it. Me. Now you're wrecking hey. it. Yeah, okay. No issue. Okay. No hey, issue. I was, I was in anti submarine warfare, and, uh, you know, I'm a, you make I'm a it, badass. I was. You're making uh, it worse. My Marines okay. for a couple hey, weeks. hey, General. General, would you fly the <laughs> chopper over and I'll just jump in and go with you? Yes. Wish we'll, I could. We'll pick you up. I can't stay in a car for a long time in them little airline seats. Thank you, General. And we will pay. We will pay when we go out, okay? We will pay. That's right. We'll go to a really cheap place, 99-cent wings, but we will play. (laughs) 99-cent wings. Thank you, General, for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. Phil O'Banes, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Winning Moves. Winning Moves is the company that puts puts out different kinds of monopoly. It puts out risk, uh, the Rubik's Cube, uh, Shoots and Ladders, which is Juan Juan's favorite, Candyland yeah, and Candyland, which uh, Raven said she really likes. Raven likes that Candyland. Candyland is where it's at, man. There we go. <laughs> the Ouija board, which is very controversial on the show, as it yeah, turns it's out, it's very popular these oh, days. Is it really? Yeah. Well, you know, times of uncertainty always spike Ouija sales. Really? Yeah. Oh <laughs> man, that's really sad to hear. It is so right? funny. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Phil. Me. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you very much. And my hat's off for putting on these uh, trivia shows before this because it took a lot more work than I thought it would. Well, be. you did excellent tonight. See, this is just like me. Hey, gra- hey. It's, it's like me going to the teacher after after class. Said, did I really do that good? You want that extra praise <laughs> on the teacher? You know? <laughs> uh, Jim, thank you very much, Jim. We really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Okay. Oh, by the way, I should say, somebody asked what I was drinking. It's Blue Moon Belgian 
white. Really? Yeah. Okay. okay. Very All good. right. I like that. We love blue moons. All right. Why didn't he know Antwerp then? Think about that. Why didn't I know Antwerp? Because I just didn't. Okay. Well, I thought it was London. X. Thank you, X. The man in the. Uh, me, and I agree. They, they were great questions, except for the ones that I said were not. See. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, your lights are off again. What, what are you doing? You're going for the uh, Marlon Brando look there? Yeah. <laughs> no, you guys all have subdued lighting. Oh, okay. All so right. I t- decided to. That's where you go for. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. And. We'll see you down the coma sometime soon, okay? Yes, sir. Yeah. See me, I'll be in my office instead of our living room. Oh. The office is just about finished. So. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. Wow. Wow. Good. Hmm. You got a secretary? Around, you know. Do you want us to hire the secretary for you? Send her down? Well, we're working on that. Okay. All right. Let you, let one one and I know if we need help on that, okay? We'll do a road trip down to North Carolina and <laughs> Imagine pop in that. On then we'd have to go see JoJo in South Carolina if they let us in. Okay, JoJo, you okay tonight? You did okay, right? I think so. It was an honor, General, to play with you. There you go. Everybody else as well, and I want to thank all you guys who were in the service for, our, for your <laughs> service because it's an unpayable debt. You're welcome. Yeah, well. Happy what, to do well it. Said. Once you're a veteran, you're always a veteran. That's the cool thing about it. I just wish they were treated better in this country by our own government. So uh, yeah, where's it? just real quick, show us the uh, Rangers hat again. I want you to throw it across the room and hopefully <laughs> step on it. Oh. Come on, Mac. Be nice. Step on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that ain't happening. They go nowhere. It's sacred. Come on. That's okay, you know, that's when it. Messier was the captain, there was a couple guys on the team. They walked in and they threw their towels on the floor. Mess. And in a locker room, they had a huge uh, emblem of the Rangers emblem, just like that. Go ahead. He called them over and he said, pick those up. Don't ever treat your sweaters on that emblem that way. Oh, yeah. Okay. And presidents after the a... moose told them, that was it. They, never had a they didn't another. know that already? <laughs> what do you tell you? Messi is with a 50 years ago, okay? They haven't been he good. Just, and he could still play probably and beat half these guys. Wow. See how the how, how quick the dream uh, the dream just doesn't want to die. He's like a Bruins fan or something. <laughs> so when you had to wait fifty four years and it's been another fifty four. <laughs> Not many people here are fifty four years old. Never mind waiting fifty four years. I gotta tell you, Raven, you and I are the only ones that have no idea what these other guys are. Yeah. Because you're not an athlete. You don't know what you're guys. I just it's, smile and okay. nod. I know, know that's what, what I've been doing all along. It's the greatest sport. You don't know what you're missing. I want to thank everyone. There's beatings, there's busted heads, JJ. scoring, <laughs> fights, drunk. It's everything you ever want. Wow. And they play on ice. <laughs> Sounds like our show after the show's over. Juan Juan, thank you very much. Hey, look. Look, she this. looks like Cher in that Oh, see that? Don't that's say share. No, that's an insult. Oh my God. That's an insult, share. You call me share one more time, I'm quitting my job and I'm going to Vegas. Don't do that. <laughs> you could be an impersonator <laughs> there. Matt, hey, listen. Can you tell me that look again, Raven? I got to take that. Oh, come on. <laughs> give it to Mac, me. Give it to Mac, me. Please. Give it to me. <laughs> don't, don't look like share. Can I get, can tell you something about share? She thought, she thought that Mount Rushmore was a natural formation. Okay. Oh, well, well, yeah. he did not. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> true. Absolutely true. Mm. Okay. I love Cher. Wait, She's wait, a wait, Taurus, wait. and Luxio was a Taurus, so I just I know they have that Don't. bond. Oh, okay, but is she like what, like 108 now? All right, I'll see. That's bad. <laughs> Matt, 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 listen, you mean to say she's doing very about? well. Okay, you mean to say that movies, doing well? Movie stars and singers. Don't know everything. No, is that what you're to say? <laughs> just her. All right, let me. That's, uh, that's all social media. Tell I can do the plugs. Okay, do what they tell you. <laughs> if you want a bag of swag from the show, okay, Mac Malone Military X Files show bag of swag, just uh, go to uh, MacMalone.com, hit the contact button, send us your mailing address. It will send you out a bag of swag. We have all kinds of stuff in there now. We have pins, buttons, 3D decals. Barcoses, which everyone wants, and uh, also um, just different kinds of stuff. Um, we got tape or something the other day, cards, who knows? Okay, it's uh, it's a bag of swag. Mac Maloney's milk Pirate Hunters, uh, Pirate Hunters swag. No, that was, a, that was a long time ago. 
Jim oh, wait, Mac, we got to pull out yeah. a bowl. Don't we have to pull the name out? The what? The whole? Oh, yeah, we have to do that. Right. Okay. Well, I've done the I've done the plugs. Okay. So, bag of swag, please. Uh, just go on uh, uh, macloney.com, hit the contact button, and you get the bag of swag. So, we're going to go to our uh, next segment now. I want to thank everyone for joining in on the game. Let's give ourselves a hand of applause. All right. A round of applause. We will sweeten it up later. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for playing, and we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Why don't we go to a commercial break now? You're listening to Mac Maloney's Military Exile Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. We'll be right back. I was in the hospital with my son for 18 months. When he got injured, I wasn't prepared, but I knew I had to be strong. When I was told about John's injury, I was in complete shock. I just remember rushing into his room and giving him a big hug and letting him know I was there. These veterans and families are just a few of the heroes we serve at Homes for Our Troops. For thousands of severely injured veterans, everyday life is filled with barriers. It was really the, the little things throughout the house. Counters that you can't roll up to. I had to drag my wheelchair down steps. I want to help, but he is so determined. At Homes for Our Troops, we build specially adapted custom homes with features like wheelchair access, roll-in showers, and automatic door openers that allow them to function independently and focus on their recovery and family. This house is freedom. It's hope. It's a new beginning. This house has given me my family back. To learn more, visit hfotusa.org. to Mac Maloney's Military Exile Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. This is Mac Maloney. What a show we've had for you tonight. One of our, uh, you know, frequent World War II trivia contests. We're just on the tail end of it, and I can tell you that uh, we had a That was a brilliant contest. That was well done. Thank you. it was. I appreciate that. Excellent excellent questions. Let me just introduce all the people who are uh, raining praise on me, okay? The very famous Juan Juan is here. Wani. You betcha. Still okay. here and having a good time doing also, it. Also, uh, Renona Ryder. I mean, uh, Raven is here. Raven is here. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Jocko is here. Jocko Johnson is here. It looks like he's looking at porn there. Jocko, what are you doing? I'm just uh, checking some things out with the translations. Okay, the translations. <laughs> Can you put two hands up on he's, the desk? He's lost a translation okay. down there. Also with Another us. Another great movie. It was a great movie. That's a good movie. I, I will have to say that even though I don't yeah. like Bill Murray. That's a great Scarlet, movie. Scarlett Scarlet Johansson. Johansson. Uh, awesome. Jim, Bill Murray, awesome. Jim Frankel, our uh, big time uh, famous literary agent, is with us. Jim, how you doing? I'm good. Okay. I'm, I'm well. Okay. That's good. I'm right. fun. So what we're going to do uh, now is... Enjoying we, the weather. The weather. Okay. Yeah. Don't we? Uh, don't don't. Uh, now you're gonna uh, rub it in again that it's like 72 degrees there or something like that, and all oh, of us are the it's northeast. Not that warm here today. It's it's only 85. The, only in the 60s. Okay, we'll remember Yesterday, you. It was 82 though, and it was like 70 degrees at nine o'clock at night. Which see uh, this? Crazy. Don't you just want to and slap? No these humidity, people? right? It's, it's, it's no, like no, 19 right now. <laughs> It's yeah, I know. <laughs> We're just getting over oh, an ice why, storm on top of a snowstorm. All right, here we go. So what we have is uh, we asked uh, our listeners to write in and to put their name in the magic fishbowl, and we're going to uh, pull their names out. We had uh, two big winners tonight, but everyone is going to uh, you know, get a free copy of Mac Maloney's new book called The Jericho Storm, uh, autographed, and for the two winners, top winners, because we had time, we're going to throw in, Jim, you'll be excited about this. We're going to throw in a copy of uh, Codename Starman, the Kalishnikov Kiss, oh, right? Okay. So um, why don't we do this, Raven? You have the Magic Fishbowl. Now, we have to say the Magic Fishbowl, even though it goes from place to place, has been hacked before, so hopefully that's not going to happen, oh. Raven. 
It's magic, baby. I have the magic fishbowl. Let's hope it's not hacked. Okay, the first person and to win. I have the fifth place winner. Okay. Roger Mills. Roger Somewhere Mills. on Earth. So, all right, let's clap for him, and this is... How do you mail it to me? Somewhere. We'll take care of it. Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, Raven. Uh, so he's getting a uh, signed copy of the Jericho Storm Wingman 21 by Mac Maloney on seal everywhere. Please, Raven. All right. We have fourth place winner, Timothy Ransom, also somewhere on Earth. Okay. All right. That's all right. Well, hopefully the postage won't be that high. somewhere on Earth. Yeah, right. Exactly. Thank you, Joe. Really? <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> Uh, please, All number, right. next one, please, right? We have next one Theodore Studdington McCobra from Sharp <laughs> Ass, Maine. <laughs> oh, oh, that is. <laughs> we know who that is. That's we all know that is Teddy the Ballas Huss. Okay, let's let's go over his name one more time because it took me a while <laughs> to figure that out. All right. What's his name again? Name again. Theodore Studdington McCobra <laughs> from Sharp Ass Man. Well, Sharp Ass Man. I'm trying to get into the fishbowl. Okay, all right. It's hacked. He How hacked. Did get in there. Uh, who knows? No one knows. It's a mystery. Okay, next, please. Right. Third place, we have Sherry Hoey, Ukiah, California. Oh, I hope I'm go. saying that right. Sure Ukiah? Go. Let's go. All right. A round of applause. Sounds oh, right. Good job. Good job. Good job. Okay. Uh, next one, we have. The adolescent formerly known as the pre-orbital dark circles around what? <laughs> around his eyes kid. <laughs> what? <laughs> the black eyed kid. Black eyed kid. Oh, Ready? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Read yeah. it again, please. He wants in on it too. <laughs> Read his name again, please, Raven. The adolescent formerly known as the pre-orbital Orbital dark circles around his eyes, kid. <laughs> okay, right. The black eyed kid, right? When if he was in DC Comics, that's what they call him. Yep. So he hacked into Please, the magic. Why can't I read the that's book? it. Yeah. Uh, so just got this email out of, out of the blue the other day. It just said, more black eyed kid. That's it. <laughs> okay. Didn't want the bag of swag. Didn't want to go in the fishbowl. More black eyed kid. Okay. And it wasn't him. I love that. That's so funny. Okay, so where are we now? We are at second place. Oh, second place. So these, this, uh, we're gonna. This is gonna be a tie now. So what mean? What that means is that because it was a tie between Jocko Johnson and General Tom, we're gonna send um, a uh, autographed copy of the Jericho Storm to both of them. New uh, Wingman Twenty One uh, just came out on sale everywhere, and uh, also we'll send a copy of uh, Codename Starman. Uh, it's a uh, series that we just started about a um, Navy uh, detective who has just a little bit of ESP. He only has like about two seconds of ESP, just enough to duck, two, as we two say. Two seconds. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, anyway, so we'll be sending that out to these two people. So why don't we go to uh, the co-winner, please, Raven. All right. Second place, we have... David Kraft from Champaign, Illinois. All right, That's David Kraft. Fancy. Okay. Fancy. Maybe he's related to Bluff Kraft, who is the owner of the New England Patriots. Okay, please. So number New York one, pull somebody up from New York. Yes. Number one, please, Raven. Right, number one, we have Julie Mahan. Mahan of Bakersfield, California. Oh, okay. All right, Bakersfield. Out there on the West Coast. Okay. All right, so cool. Great. So we will get uh, to them the two top winners, co winners, uh, signed copies of uh, the Jericho Storm and also uh, code name Starman. And um, to the others, we'll get a copy of uh, the Jericho Storm to you as well and a bag of swag as well. Thanks for everyone for participating. We really appreciate it. And why don't we uh, say goodnight now to everyone. Thank you for hanging around. Jocko, we really appreciate it. He's showing us his uh, badge. Look at, that. Four, Look at this. Four things that he's, filled he's like on. goring. He has he's all these uh, titles. On Somebody everywhere. Okay. Thank you, Jocko. We appreciate it. <laughs> Johnny Cash. Jim, once again, Jim yes, Frankel, big time literary agent. man. Thank you, Jim. We appreciate it. Okay. JJ, thank right. you very much. We appreciate it. We love you, New Here Do. I mean, Raven, we love you on New Here Do. 
We really appreciate it. <laughs> Sideways knock. And I, Thanks for and joining us. Mix and, her up with me, but. And uh, classing up the show. So. Uh, I hope everyone, uh, you know, enjoyed tonight's World War Troop Trivia Contest. Please just go for a uh, look online for Homes for Our Troops and see what they're all about. Thank you for everyone participating. And until the next time, this is Mac Maloney for the entire gang saying be safe, be happy, and bye-bye. <laughs>